the book of Matthew chapter 22 from verse 37 to 40 and Jesus said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets apostle paul speaking says that everything we fail they say but love cannot fail no wonder he's he started saying in the book of romans chapter 8 and he said what can separate us from the love of christ and he says is it tribulation or persecution or death he said for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord Amen love is beyond anything and you must understand that there, there is a difference between love of God and love for God. God loved you that he gave his only son. And why God gave his only son is so that you can love him back. He used his son to show you how to love. And you cannot claim that you love God and you are not going for the interest of the kingdom. You cannot claim that you love God and you're not serving the interests of the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You cannot claim that you love God and you're not serving for the interests of the kingdom. Jesus asked Peter in the book of John, he said, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes. Jesus did not say, yes, I know you love me. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. And he asked him again, Peter, the son of Barjona. He said, do you love me? He said, yes. And he said, feed my sheep. So if you love God, there must be something that you must do for God. There must be something that you must do for God. Hallelujah. So you cannot be claiming that you love him for mouths. If you love him, then you must exercise your love. In the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, and he says, seek you first. There must be something that a man must seek first. There is something a woman must seek first. It didn't say seek you first your child. It didn't say seek you first your husband. It didn't say seek you first your wife. Instead, it says seek you first the kingdom and his righteousness. He said then all these things that the Gentiles are struggling to get shall be added unto you. So prosperity is not what we should seek for, but the kingdom and his righteousness. Prosperity is, is an adage. Good health is an adage. So if you really want to 
show God that you love him, your heart must be going after the things of God. You cannot just say, I love God, and you're not going after the things of God. You must go after the things of God. Like now, the way I'm preaching now, somebody is playing the keyboard. Somebody is playing the keyboard, assisting the work of God. This person that is playing this keyboard is also ministering with me. He might not be seen on the camera, but he's also ministering with me. So what is he doing? He is serving the cause, the interest of the kingdom. You can see the choir sang. When they sang here, they were serving the interest of the kingdom. That's why if you're here, belong to a department. Find where you can stay and serve God find where you can say, do something in the house of, of your father. This is the house of your father. You cannot stay in the house of your father if you claim that God is your father. You cannot stay in the house of your father and you are not serving the cause. You are not doing something, assisting somewhere. Helping, making sure that the work is going. Like this morning now, we came, we sat down. Some people arranged the seats. Some people clean the seats. What were they doing? They were serving the interests of the kingdom. So the people that came and sat and the people that cleaned, they are not the same. Somebody made the seat available for you to sit down in the house of God. So you must find something that you are doing. That is how to show that you love God. You cannot be claiming somebody will be singing, I love you. I love you, God. I love you, God. I love you, God. Like the song we sang now. More than God. More than God. I've got something more than God. If all I have is you, Jesus is more than God. More than life. More than silver. I've got something more than gold If all I have is you Jesus is more than gold Now, it is easy to sing it with your mouth but can you be able to prove it? Can you be able to leave your business for Jesus? <laughs> can you be able to leave your business and say, no, Jesus, I just want to give you so-so day. Can you be able to close that shop when they say there is a meeting? You close it. I went to buy something somewhere in the market. A Muslim. It was time for prayer. I came and I said, I'm buying so-so. He said, no, 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 no. That he wants to go and pray. That if I want, I should wait. Then if I cannot wait, I should go to another place. That he wants to go and pray. Amen? How many of us can be able to do it? There is a customer with money. And it is time for you to go and, and bow down to your God. And you say, no, 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 no. It is not today. I want to go and pray. Amen. So it is easy to sing I love you more than anything but can you be able to show it? Can you be able to prove it? And say, Father, I love you more than anything. I love you more than anything. Even if this shop is no longer working, it will not stop my love for you. That is what Paul meant. What can separate us from the love? So even in the midst of persecution, you are loving him. In the midst of peril, you are loving him. How many of us now, you say, I love you more than anything. Can you be able to die for your faith? Can you be able now, if somebody puts gun on your head and say, denounce Jesus. This same Jesus that you say that is more than good. Can you be able to say, I cannot deny him. Instead, let me die. So you must be able to prove your love. You can't say you love and you are not sacrificing. 
if you love God, then it must cost you something. For God so loved the world that he, gave, that he gave his only beloved begotten son. Amen. Now that God has begotten you, because when that Bible was written, Jesus was the only begotten son. But Jesus is no longer the only begotten son of God. You are also the son of God. You are also the daughter of God because you have been begotten. Now that you have been begotten, what can you lay down? What sacrifice can you be able to lay down? What price can you be able to pay? Because every belief of a man must come with a price. If you can denounce Christ in the midst of temptation, then your conviction is little. You have not been fully convinced. So we must go beyond singing I love you to proving I love you. We must go beyond singing I love you, saying I love you to proving that you love him. What can you be able to lay down? Somebody don't know the price that we paid to be here. I was talking to somebody on the mountain. I said, there was a time that I was a businessman. It's not that the business was uh, shaky, no. I know how much I used to start the business. And the business have started growing. And God said, close it down. I need that business. Give it to me. And what did I, what did I do? I just wake up from there when I say to him, I have given you the, this business. I wake up from there, called people, and unshone everything in the shop. Unshone everything. Use the money and organize crusade. Some people, when they saw it, when they had it, they said, this guy must be a madman. Amen. Because if you are in love, you will behave like a mad person. There are some things that you will take and there are some things that you will do that somebody that is not in love cannot be able to do it. Hallelujah. If you genuinely love God, then you must sacrifice. You must go after souls. You saw the drama that the women did when uh, our beloved sister was crying, shouting, singing all manner of uh, emotional song. It was somebody that encouraged her and said, this is not how to do it. Do it this way. What did that person did? It has, that person have helped a soul. There are souls there that only your speech can be able to fix them aright. Just talking to them can change their entire life. So if you love God, you must sacrifice. The Bible says, and Solomon loved the Lord. And he gave 1,000 bond offering. What made him to do it? Love. Loving God can make you to do some crazy things. Crazy things. Before I became a pastor, rain have never stopped me from coming to church. I will enter there, I will be singing inside the rain. Carry the clothes I will wear when I reach church and package it inside leather. I will be singing. That is wisdom. When I get to the church, I will look for one corner where I will dress up again. Sing my song. Not even rain can stop me from going to your house. You must come to the place where nothing stops you from loving God. Nothing stops you from loving God. Not even situation. Nothing stops you from loving God. You cannot love God and not give to God. Giving is part of love. Some people, since when you got born again, now 15 naira you they carry, come give up for you. Since when you got born again, even when God has started blessing you, you have not Say, no, I cannot be giving God this amount of money. Do you know that sometimes when some kind of money, 
When I don't give God some kind of money, I used to cry. If I'm coming to church, I'll be crying. I'll say, God, you know my heart. I don't want to give you this. It's too small. It's too small. Have you come to a place where your own father, you want to give your father something, and it is paining you that what you are giving him is small. And you just, you are saying, Papa, your biological father, you are saying, Papa, pray for me, be praying, let God bless me so that I can give more because you wish to give more. That is how you should relate with God. You know, so many times we call God Father, Father, but we are not relating to Him as our Father. We don't have a, a, a relation, Father and Son or Father and Daughter relationship. You want to give to your Father, but it is not enough and sometimes you begin to ask your father, please be praying for me so that God will bless me so that I can increase what I'm giving. But when it comes to God, so many of us, we are not seeing God as our own father. So what you have been given 15 naira every time. Another two years, the same thing. Another three years, the same thing. You are giving God leftover. Something that you cannot even give to your biological parent. Something that you cannot even give to somebody of high esteem, but you are giving it to God. Say, oh God, you understand. Listen to me. If you really want our Father to prosper you, then you have to come with a sincere heart. Not a heart of uh, cheating. You have to come. Sometimes, I will do some things and have some kind of I'll be saying father help me this is not what I want to give you help me I want to increase what I'm giving help me help me hallelujah I am asking him that one day he should give me so that I can give him in one day one million dollars in one day he should give me so that in one day I can be able to also give him five million dollars. Amen. The same way I am thinking about how God will give me something so that I, I can even buy a car for my father. I can even buy a car for my mother. You think that way but you are not thinking that way about God. So you cannot successfully love God without giving to God. Every woman here now, you have need. And sometimes you will run to your husband and say, give me this one. Give me that one. How many times have you bought that man shoe? And say, Baba, thank you for loving me. Amen. You must learn how to exchange gifts. No, some people want to stay on this particular end and become Mekisedek and everything is collecting. May God open your eyes in the name of Jesus. So serving the interests of the kingdom is very important. And while you are serving him, have, have business mindset. Tell him what you need. As I am cleaning this chair, this is what I am desiring. Thank you. That is how to go. A guy shook hand with an occultic man and something happened to the guy. And he went to a pastor. The pastor did not even pray for him. I think the church is up to 1,000 sitters. He told the young man, go and clean the whole church. The guy finished cleaning the whole church and came down. He said, I have done it. He said, now when you go back, go and shake the man again. <laughs> That's all. The young man entered the uh, man's office, greeted him and brought his hand. The young man shook him. When he shook him, 
the guy was leaving, the man was just looking at him because something has happened. There is power in this thing. There is power in these things. Don't look down on it. You see yourself carrying this thing. There is power in it. You are serving the interests of your father. And he cannot abandon you. Hallelujah. You see yourself cleaning the seat. There is power in it. No wonder Jesus said that he that wants to be the greatest will be the servant of all. So it takes servanthood to be the greatest. It takes servanthood to be the greatest. If you cannot humble yourself before God, then men will not celebrate you. 